I was approaching this conversation from the perspective of, yes, let's hear what India is doing on the ground. I want to understand the policy responses. I want to understand the human rights issues and all of that. And Shruti, what you did is you brought that rich um, underpinning, uh, moving from thinking about the symptoms and thinking about how do we address what's happening to the deeper um, things that are, yeah, that, that, that are at play about who we are as human beings and you know and and i love that and i really appreciate you bringing that into the conversation because it's something that we have been talking and reflecting on but we didn't necessarily bring it into these conversations you know and so you so much i'm glad it was it added value because this is something that i have been thinking and talking and writing about you know the the fact that every time we are pitting, you know, the, we are kind of fragmenting our own thinking. We are working in silos. We are, you know, becoming, we are become, we, we're getting caught in small details, small pockets and not looking at the big picture. And, and this Corona is, you know, it's, this is COVID-19. It will happen again. Because I, mean, I learned, I learned the science of this. Corona is a kind of virus. And this, this is a virus that has, I mean, earlier we had that Nipah and whatever those were, they were also coronaviruses. So mm -hmm. as, this is the UNF, UNEP uh, chief had, has warned, uh, in great some, somebody, her name is the UNEP chief. Uh, she said that, you know, this is going to happen more and more because uh, human beings are encroaching on the territories of animals, wildlife. We are, you know, uh, this, is, this is classic, uh, what is called Anthropocene. Yes. You know, we have, I mean, we have become the yeah. owners of the earth. That's right. But what else is, this is classic anthropocene. Yeah. If, it's you know, negative we, feedback. It's negative biofeedback. Yeah. Negative. Oh, but but we can we can definitely tackle it. Um, I've just watched the series of Netflix. Um, yes, it is a zoological virus. It comes from a bat or whichever animal it was. Uh, but the fact is that if we actually have the correct uh, response, mm -hmm system in place then we can at least um, limit it to a certain extent so you know it happened in Wuhan if they would react two weeks earlier it might actually be contained and limited to one country alone so it wouldn't have this um, type of uh, spread as we are observing it today and it's almost impossible to stop it but in fact we're not really stopping it we are onboarded um, in this evolution let's say, and the evolution is not just biologically, it definitely is the systemic and political and legal and from so many different perspectives. Uh, I hope that we can uh, see through some of the problems, I mean, solutions for some of the problems that we've discussed today and uh, get more and more of us together and under one umbrella. I, uh, I've been speaking about the project with some of my other uh, folks in, in Delhi and everybody feels that this is really important. Uh, this is uh, the good fight, and uh, and I'm very grateful that uh, that you decided to start it, that you decided to take it on, and you're very courageous. I must say that uh, for someone who has uh, who has like no institution backing, no you know no brand, you guys have just you know gone on and you know made a website, and you've been like at it, you've been organizing sprints so regularly. Uh, it takes a lot. You've been very patient with uh, with me and some of my other friends uh, who come in and go out. Like Shruti says, I, I attend multiple Zoom calls within the sprint. It's a thing that I keep logging in, logging out all the time. But uh, and and you've been very patient with us going through our experiments and you know our learnings. So uh, uh, hats off to you. And I hope that uh, that everyone, each one of us who's a part who's a part of this project, is able to deliver. On time and come out with uh, come out with some kind of uh, a knowledge bank that will serve uh, the global academia and policy community for years to come, maybe decades to come. So, uh, so thank you. This is this is massive, and I'm very proud to be uh, a part of this. So, before I sign off, uh, finally, I have come to a point which is making meaning, you know, out of it, uh, which is now being talked about as the sixth stage of grief. You know, where you are trying to see what what meaning does this hold, and I think that there is a 
huge, huge possibility that I can see uh, that this crisis is carrying for us. You know, it is, uh, and and so I was uh, I was actually reading uh, uh, Roberto Unger, and in that while I was reading his book, uh, I also looked up a, a talk on which is on the YouTube, which is called uh, something about the necessity, false necessity. Mm -hmm illusion of false necessity, where he says, where he ends his talk by saying that uh, we, uh, that hope is not a condition for action. Uh, that, you know, we don't have to wait for the hopeful circumstances that create hope for us to take action. He says hope is actually the result, the consequence of action. And I think that that was, that really gave me a lot of, you know, it, it gave me a lot of sense of power, you know, and, uh, and I hold on to that today. Thank you. Thank you so We have much. to create hope. We have to create hope for ourselves and for other people. We have to create hope. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and what we are doing is one such small step. So. Sure.